Hey guys, Henry here. I've decided that I should really remake uh, my Blender export tutorials. Uh, just because since I made the original one, I, I've learned that there are a few ways to do things better, and I don't really think the original one teaches the best habits anymore. Also, in the original tutorial, I showed you guys how to export a sapper, and it wasn't really a very ambitious change. Now we have a lot more assets available, I thought we could do something more creative. So, uh, in front of me, I should have, if I've configured him right, a uh, French line fusilier for 1805 with the bicorn here. Um, I can see a few things that I, I want to change first, but um, yeah, that, that's what the model looks like. One mistake I'm noticing now in this unscripted tutorial is that this guy's wearing a Q. So this is actually an ideal opportunity for me to show you how to uh, hide and swap things out. So uh, if you want to hide an object in Blender, and I will be telling you all the key bindings, you can press H. The H key for hide. So I've clicked, uh, I've clicked on uh, the hair here, and I press H. It's hidden. And now our poor guy is bald. At the top of the overview, uh, sorry, the um, sidebar here on the right. If you go to the top, usually at the top of all my Blender files, you find the common parts. Here we have a hair slash cues folder, and there is hair here. If you move your mouse to the right side, where these eyeballs are. When the eyeball is closed, it means uh, the object is hidden, but if I click that eyeball, the hair is now visible. So our Frenchie has some hair. Now I said I wanted to do something kind of more ambitious with the, with this guy. He is uh, configured as a, as a normal marching pose right now. But let's say that we wanted to make like a firing line. Uh, we could use some of the skirmisher poses. Now to do that, uh, we're gonna need to change quite a few things in the model. But let's find our skirmishes. Here in the uh, in the sidebar, we have a folder that says skirmishes. I click the eyeball on there, and uh, it's showing one of our skirmisher poses that's just uh, cropping through uh, our existing one. It's a bit of a mess. So we want to toggle off uh, the marching pose here under the French marching with musket. Toggle that off. So now we have uh, our Frenchy uh, in this pose. His uh, legs are still mixed up. That's because there's a trousers folder up here where we have uh, marching legs. Toggle that off. Yeah, now we have our guy uh, at a ready pose. I think that one's, uh, that's either stooping or standing ready. I'm trying to which pose that is. Uh, skirmishes folder. If you click the uh, arrow here, you can expand it down. Which pose is that? That's stooping, I think. Uh, there we go, it's a very big folder, stooping. Toggle that off. Let's say you wanted to make a normal firing line of, uh, of guys. Um, actually, scratch that. You know what? It's a bit more complicated to do firing line. Um, <laughs> sorry, the, uh, the, the, the horrors of operating like a script. Let's do, a, let's do ready. Like if you want to do a square formation, for example. For square formation, you've got uh, a kneeling ready pose here under kneeling. Uh, kneeling ready. And you've got uh, a standing ready pose. Let's do both. You know what, let, let's change this into a, a tutorial on how to make a square formation, shall we? So let's start with uh, with standing ready. Um, I think if he's normal line fusilier, he doesn't need a mustache, so I'm clicking the mustache, H to hide. And now I'm just checking the model over. He's got a saber, which isn't correct. I think that's the saber. Uh, yeah, it's one of the Polish parts here. So at the top of the skirmishes folder, there's a shared national parts bit, France, Poland. Toggle Poland off. Oh, that gets rid of the bayonet. Okay, we'll just toggle off the saber. So, scabbard and uh, this hilt. So yeah, now he has a bayonet. I'm not sure if the bayonet's in the right place, but uh, whatever, you know. Uh, let's export this model then, because that's what this tutorial's about. If I click the base and I press A, I select everything that's on screen. And this is where we're gonna have one of the differences from our original tutorial, because when I go on uh, file and export, STL, this is how you export something, file, export, STL. There's going to be a pop-up screen which you're not going to be able to see because of my recording software, I'm afraid. But when I click it, I'm now looking at a dialog box that asks me where I want to export the file to. And on the right-hand side, should be very visible to you, over on the right, there's a little checkbox that says selection only. And in the previous uh, tutorial, I'd had you guys copying your bits over to a fresh Blender file and exporting from there, so you wouldn't export the whole contents of the file. Well, it turns out I'm an idiot, and there's just this little box. So, selection only, I've now ticked. And I'm just typing in uh, French, Fusilier, standing, ready. 
and then clicking export SDL. And uh, I'll show you how to fix that file up. Now, any file that you export from Blender, you need to repair, uh, just as good practice. Not every file will need it, but uh, I just do it as standard. If I download models from other creators, I also run them through this program. The program in question is 3D Builder, which you can find on the Windows Store, uh, if you have Windows 10. Uh, bup, 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 bup. Here it is. Uh, it's two words, not one. 3D Builder. Now, I've already got this installed, so uh, your screen should look different from mine. But where I have open, you should have installed. Uh, this is a free program from Microsoft, so, uh, you know, no concerns with that. And uh, when you've downloaded it, you'll want to open your new STL file with this program. And here is our uh, Fusilier. And uh, we're going to get on to the second mistake that I'd made uh, in the previous tutorial. One that really makes me look like an idiot. I told you guys that there's a weird bug where stuff gets exported 10 times larger than it should be. Um, the reason for that is that I had never noticed that at the top of 3D Builder, it asks you for the unit of measurement for the file. Now my Blender files are all set up in millimeters, but I'd be importing things into 3D Builder in centimeters, because that's what's by default uh, on some objects. It, it switches between the two. Always, always, always click millimeters, and then the file comes in at the correct size. Sort of correct anyway, I'll show you. Uh, we click import model, and our file comes in with this red box on the bottom. If a file has a red box, it means there are problems with the model, and if you try to 3D print it, it won't print properly. Some of the, um, some of the objects aren't manifold, uh, it's just a, a bugged mesh. So we need to click the model, and this is something you only need to do for Europe Asunder models. My Union Asunder stuff and um, Battleground 3 it's fine. But if you're using Union Asunder, my models are um, true 6mm scale inside Blender, but when I export them, I like to export them to 116.5% scale, so they match uh, metal manufacturers. So if you're trying to match uh, my pre-exported models, you need to click the model, click this icon here, scale, click where it says millimeters, which changes it to percentages, click this padlock, so uh, all our scaling settings are locked together, and type in 116.5%, yeah. And then when we click repair down here, in the bottom right, click to repair, it just starts repairing. And uh, I'll uh, resume the tutorial when it finishes. Uh, the file has finished repairing, I can tell because it no longer has a red line and uh, this white box is now around it. So you just click the X to close, and save scene, and it'll take a while to save, and then your model's done. Okay, so now I've just opened up Litchi Slicer, and I'm gonna drop our new models inside. There they go. I just dragged and dropped them in from a, from a file explorer window. Uh, I'm gonna make some space here, because I'm gonna duplicate these models. To duplicate, we press Alt-D for duplicate. So three for that one. Okay, move you back, and three for this, well, then one, two, three. Okay, um, let's put them at the same Y location. And put them in the even spacing. I think the base is about three millimeters wide, so this one, well, let's do 2.5 and then minus 2.5, hope the spacing looks right, which would make you 5. I'm typing here, 7.5, I'm typing here uh, the X location. If you just type in here, you can put them uh, at uniform spacings, minus 7.5. That looks okay for our purposes. Um, how far forward do we want these to be for it to look good? Well, they'll be on separate strips anyway, so let's do 0.69, fine. 0 0.69, 0 0.69, 0 0.69, and match the spacing, which was 7.5, 2 7.5, uh, minus 7.5, minus 2.5. There we go, we could make two strips for a square formation with that. The last step is to give it a base. Is a cube that we can use as a base. You're at 8.07 on the Y. 8.07. Click on scale on the left, unlock the padlock, make the base one millimeter tall, that's how tall my bases are, for Europe Asunder at least. 
Uh, how deep should it be? Let's see, five is that enough? Oh, maybe a bit more than five. Uh, I like round numbers. Let's go for like eight. Okay, we'll say it's enough here. Uh, and for the thickness, we've got 7.5. So is, is it 15? No, 20. 22. Okay. Not great for frontage. But there, that's how we'd make a base. And we can make another one. Uh, drop it in. And these guys, looks like that one wouldn't really need to be so thick. So we'll just do that as being six. Yeah. And there you go. We have made uh, two strips. If you wanted to export these as STLs, say one at a time, I'll just delete the front rank. You press export, export to 3D file, make sure STL is checked, and I can call this um, square formation back rank. Though I know you, you can't see what I'm doing right now. And I'll just open it up in 3D Builder. There you go. We have a new strip, and it shouldn't even need repairing. Nope, that, that is just good to go, ready to print. Uh, strip of guys standing ready. And there you go. I uh, hope that was useful for you. Uh, ideally, no mistakes. I apologize for the unscripted nature of the tutorial. That's probably the worst thing. I know you just had to sit through like eight minutes, but that is the up-to-date method of how I export my models and place them on, uh, on strips. And uh, I'll leave the old tutorial up all the same, but I'm going to put a link to this one in the description. So, yeah. Take care, guys, and uh, hope you enjoy messing with the Blender files for either Europe Asunder or any other project that you might have uh, bought into. Thanks so much. See you around.